I was born in 1926, so I grew up in the Depression of 1930, which was a much more severe depression than we, we've ever had since. And my mother always said to me, when you grow up, whatever you do, uh, never be a contractor. So I followed my mother's advice and got a job in the AMP, which is a very large um, insurance company. The war was on and there was only two men in the department at that time, so there were lots of girls. And uh, one of them who was a few years older than me took me under a wing and it was she who talked me into that uh, I should go to university. So I applied to get into engineering, but I didn't have a very good TE and um, I failed. A few weeks before the start of the first term, I got a call from the Dean, Professor O.F. Blakey, and I went down to see him and he said, well, Clough, uh, there's been some dropouts and I can give you a place in engineering. And I said, oh, gee, thanks, sir. I very much want to do engineering and it's great to know I can, I can get in. He said, well, you're 40th out of a list of 40 and uh, there's no way you'll ever get through. And I thought, oh, you all blasted. And <laughs> but I was the keenest student he had during <laughs> the first term and um, actually um, finished up doing well. So it was a, a good experience. Well, um, I have known Harold for many years. Um, first mention of the name Clough was during the 50s when the Narrows Bridge was being built and I went as a student and visited the site and had my first experience there. When we were building the, um, the Narrows Bridge, the first Narrows Bridge in 1957, um, it was made up of precast concrete blocks, each about 10 tonnes in weight, which were erected on a scaffolding and then tensioned together. Uh, uh, to form a, a precast, post-tensioned uh, bridge, uh, which was state-of-the-art at the time. It was exciting because this was the biggest thing that happened in Perth, yeah. to have a Narrows Bridge, yeah. because it was such a little ordinary town. And to have a <laughs> bridge going over from South Perth to Perth was immense. Yeah. You know, everybody talked about it. Yeah. And we were so excited when we got it. Yeah. It was Christiani and Nielsen. Mm. They were a Danish firm and they were a great firm and um, they wanted to join us. We've been fortunate to have someone who, who's developed the company that built such iconic structures and other iconic projects and uh, all because he chose the people that he needed to drive these and he encouraged them within the organisation and he looked after their interests, uh, always believed in people, saw it as the, one of the great values that, that, that an organisation, and I think he even said it, that a country needed to, to make things happen. Looking back, I, I think w w one of the best things I did uh, when I was in business was to give scholarships to students Harold had very cleverly positioned the Clough Scholarships to be seen by the outside world and by the faculty at the university as being for the very brightest students. So I was amazed to be included in that cohort. I think probably the best indicator of the legacy of that program is the fact that it's being emulated by other companies and that Clough has again, the company has reinstated what has been a fantastic program and continues to be. Well, I think one of the cleverest things Harold did with the scholarship program was not insist that Clough Scholarship winners join the organisation. So that means there's a legacy not only of Clough Scholars who joined the Clough organisation, but other Clough Scholars wider around Western Australia and now around the whole world. We've got a whole group of people out there that, are, uh, that benefited from it and are also now uh, in turn giving scholarships themselves, so it's become a, an ongoing experience, which is very gratifying. Harold, in terms of his legacy, the fact that he was a, one of the first donors to the engineering zone was a fantastic stepping stone for us to move on in developing that project. I think 
his contributions to the university as a whole have been very, very insightful in taking a commercial view of how universities should be run much earlier than the university was willing to see that as being incredibly important. So all through Harold's life, starting with the Narrows Bridge and working up to large oil and gas projects and moving into Indonesia, Harold's always bitten off more than he could chew, he's always taken on bold risks and he's always backed the intelligence of his team and his people over almost common sense. He's given insane amounts of responsibility to very young people and they've all repaid him in spades because they were so uh, pleased by the trust that he showed in them. I think Harold will be remembered for the legacy of Western Australia and Australian engineering and taking it to an international level. He was the person who made possible major engineering projects in Western Australia. His leadership and his vision uh, made that particular difference and they're the things that, that uh, I find um, of special quality that, that doesn't come easily, but it certainly does to him.